Hey everybody, today is Friday, and uh, let's see. it be the 26th day of April, 2024, and this is my training vlog, day one, let's see, it was 161 the other day, I want to say that was about shoot I don't know three or four days ago so I'm just gonna say today is 164 okay if not I, I don't feel like looking it up right now so if not if I'm wrong it'll be corrected in the title but anyway today is 164 of year three of operation my training vlog operation great reset build back better Wheelchair road work. You will have nothing. You will own nothing. And you will be happy. I'm Charles Lanson, your happiness guide. Okay, today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different again. Um, I think I'm going to be doing this from now on. An Operation Great Reset. This is pretty appropriate. But the other day, I started basically, uh, I, basically what I've been doing is I've been doing uh, on Twitter, X, excuse me, Elon, didn't mean to diss you, bro, I meant X, uh, I've been doing uh, a series of X posts where I'm basically doing sort of a, sort of a pictorial analysis in X post slash tweet form uh, daily where uh, I'm kind of doing an analysis of the seven habits of highly effective people by uh, Stephen Covey God rest his soul uh, and uh, anyway the other day I thought well you know hey it might be a good idea um, if I sort of do this visualization exercise um the reason uh, another reason uh, the made one of the major reasons I, I sort of do that is well uh, I guess I'll get into it later I don't want to I don't want to digress and, but uh, which is I have a very bad habit of that but anyway yeah I just wanted to point out that uh, it's it's raining out there again today so going to be another one of these days where I just kind of, kind of stay in the garage and talk a lot. So that being said, um, yeah, so the, uh, anyway, I just thought it would be a good idea the other day if I kind of went over this little visualization exercise I came across in Stephen Covey's book and that I wrote about a little bit. Uh, I tweeted about uh, the other day, and uh, I'm sorry, just tweeting is a good verb. Uh, if I say, if I X'd about it, it just doesn't sound as good. All right? I'm sorry, Elon. Uh, I, or I could just say, I created an X post about it the other day, but it's just tweeting has become such a part of our common vernacular. But I guess that's going to have to change, I guess. In 10 years, people will be like, what the hell are you talking about? But anywho, what is tweeting? What is that? Some form of bird communication? Uh, um, but anywho, my, my point being, there we go, di I'm digressing yet again. Um, so, that went so swimmingly well, uh, I thought, that... But also, it's just a good way to, you know, sort of fill up dead air. Uh, and I was just like, well, shoot, man. Maybe I'll just go over all my tweets and sort of, uh, just sort of meld all of this together. This is, you know, this is sort of appropriate. It's sort of keeping it. Well, I just want to show you all this. I'm not just making it up. I just want Whenever the pavement is slick, 
I guess it stopped. I don't know. It's just barely raining. The pavement is raining. Get a grip. On the, okay, I don't know what that was. I heard a little beeping. Uh, not quite sure what that was. Anywho, uh, so I digress yet again. Um, so anyway, I yeah, I thought, well, heck, going over, you know, these, going over these you know, self-help. Uh, ideals and principles uh, espoused in uh, Stephen Covey's work uh, would be a great that would fit quite nicely with the whole theme of building back better and the great reset um, and if I could you know combine that uh, of me you know doing my uh, road work exercise why not I mean that's perfect isn't it I think so. Okay, but anyway. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about personal mission statements. Okay. A personal mission statement is a concise declaration of your goals, core values, and aspirations. It can help you define your purpose and what you want to achieve in your life or career. Now, okay, I just want to digress one more time and just let you know I'm, I'm probably going to start off with this. I'll probably go into one or two more topics. Um, we shall see. Or I may just stick to this one to keep it nice and short and sweet. But let's see. I think I might just stick to one and I don't know. We'll see. So anyway, that being said, so we're talking about life statements. It can also help the life state, or I mean the uh, personal mission statements. It can also help you regain focus on your priorities and life path. Personal mission statement should contain two basic elements what you want to do, what you want to accomplish, what contributions you want to make, and what you, okay, no, so, all right, two basic elements. The first element being what you want to do. And by this I mean what you want to accomplish, what contributions you want to make. The second basic element of a personal mission statement should be what you want to be. And by that I mean what character strengths you want to have, what qualities you want to develop. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to digress again here real quick. By the way, if you want to check out, uh, if you actually want to read this stuff that I'm talking about, I guess I can put, I'll go ahead and put the link down um, in in the description for my blog and uh, also for my Twitter feed, my X feed, whatever you want to call it. And uh, you know, it's pretty much, I'm just going straight from there. So if you'd like to check it out and just peruse it at your leisure, you can do that um, as well. I'll leave the links in the description. Okay, so now, here are some tips for creating a personal mission statement. Identify your unique strengths. Think about what success means to you. Identify your personal goals. Create a short list of measurements to help you track your progress. Write it down on paper. Make it personal and unique to you. Make it positive. 
write it in present tense. And uh, so I have an, exa uh, an example mission statement here. Um, but before I do that, yeah, I'd like to tell you that um, yeah, this is just a little introduction. I think we're going to need to be talking a little bit more about mission statements in the next uh, a couple posts, but uh, upcoming posts. But we'll we'll see. Anyway, here's a, a sample mission statement. Personal personal mission statement. To live a principle-centered life, committed to continue with intellectual, spiritual, and physical development within a devotion to creating value in each role. I feel in a family, friend, community, and organizational setting. I strive to embrace learning opportunities, approach life experiences with a spirit of enthusiasm. and passion and create lasting positive impact in all areas of my life. All right, moving on. So now, we're going to talk uh, about going to discuss this notion of re-scripting that uh, Stephen Covey brings up in his book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. This is all part of the second habit of the seven habits which is begin with the end in mind. It's, uh, so I know I'm just throwing these uh, terms out here, but uh, yeah, stick with me and keep coming back day after day, and I'll keep revisiting them so that um, so I know we're on the second habit right now. But I'll be going back and doing some reviews. We'll be going back and addressing, you know, what is the first habit, by the way, is be proactive. So you got be proactive, and then we discussed, or I discussed that earlier in my post, but since I'm just keep coming back to the uh, vlog and uh, you know we'll we'll do a full-on review I mean in through the space of multiple videos so I won't leave you hanging ladies and gentlemen I promise anywho so this brings us to okay rescripting becoming your own first creator okay now what this is a concept from the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey, and it, it involves using imagination and conscience to identify values, beliefs, and principles that guide one's life. The process of writing one's own script is more like re-scripting or changing some of the basic paradigms that one already has. Rescripting means being responsible for one's first creation. And this is based on this whole notion that uh, in his books that all things are created first. Uh, before we go out and we create things in the physical world, uh, you know, i.e. a house or if we design some clothes um, or or anything basically you know uh, you have to have a plan first or you would at least have to have an intention first and that starts in your mind everything's created mentally at first so when he's talking about the first creation that's what he's referring to rescripting means being responsible for one's first creation rescripting oneself so that the paradigms from which 
one's behavior and attitude flow are congruent with one's deepest values and in harmony with correct principles. It also means to begin each day with those values firmly in mind. So basically what he's saying is where you know we can either choose to have these first creations imposed on us by others uh, agendas and whatnot or we can choose to sort of reprogram ourselves. So default scripts are the default or status quo goals and values given to us by society from family, friends, schools, pop culture, corporations, political organizations, etc. Okay, moving on. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about leadership and management. The two creations, again, uh, the two creations. That uh, goes back to this notion that Stephen Covey had. I mean, it's not original with Stephen Covey, but he talks about it in his book that all things being created twice. Um, you know, whether it be uh, the blueprints for a house being the first creation basically things are created in the mind and we go before we go out and create create them in the physical world so leadership and man and he can he somehow shows how leadership and management are manifestations of this notion of the two creation leadership is the first creation and management is the second Leadership is about what you want to accomplish, while management is about how to accomplish it. Peter Drucker and Warren Bennis said, Management is doing things right. Leadership is doing the right things. Leadership and management are complementary roles that play a critical role in creating a successful organization. Leaders set the tone and provide the vision while managers organize, delegate, and execute tasks by working together. Yeah, shoulders are a little stiff and sore. By working together, leaders and managers Foster a culture of teamwork, motivation, and improved performance. Uh, here are some differences between leadership and management. Leadership, creating a vision. Leadership is creating a vision, empowering people, Creating momentum, thinking ahead, capitalizing on opportunities, innovating, developing, and focusing on people. Management is implementing processes, achieving organizational goals, administering, maintaining, and focusing on systems and structure. Here are some similarities between managers and leaders. Oops. Managers and leaders are in charge of groups of people. They both help people or organizations reach their goals. Managers and leaders provide structure for others. They focus on communication, on open communication. Um, managers and leaders um, exhibit honesty and respect 
they have honesty and respect. Or no, I'm sorry. Honesty and respect are important to both. They are both uh, confident and committed to their roles. Managers and leaders are both optimistic. They both hold themselves accountable and have integrity. So I know what you're saying. Well, hey man, I've had leaders before that have no integrity. I've had le uh, managers that have no integrity and they don't hold themselves accountable. And I've had managers that are the same. And to that I say, and they were not truly. They were neither managers nor leaders. They were just cheap, filthy imposters. Okay, so... This is what true leaders and managers possess. If they do not, then you're following the wrong person. If your leader exhibits characteristics that are antithetical to accountability and integrity, then You're uh, following someone down the wrong path, ladies and gentlemen, my humble opinion. Okay, but all right, so moving on. By design or default, it's a principle that all things are created twice. The first creation being mental, i.e. a plan, intention, etc. But not all first creations are by conscious design. In our personal lives, if we do not develop our own self-awareness and become responsible for first creations, we empower other people and circumstances outside our circle of influence is, okay, this is another term from uh, the seven habits of highly effective people, and uh, basically what that means, well, I mean, we'll get more into it later, uh, probably in a later post, uh, a later vlog, video, what have you, but um, circle of influence is basically things over which we have direct control. So, Bearing that in mind, let me take it from the top. Take this from the top. Okay, design or default. It's a principle that all things are created twice. The first creation being mental, i.e., a plan, intention, etc. But not all first creations are by conscious design. In our personal lives, if we do not develop our own self-awareness and become responsible for first creations. We empower other people and circumstances outside our circle of influence, think things over which we have direct control, to shape much of our lives by default. We reactively live the scripts handed to us by family, associates, other people's agendas, the pressures of circumstance, scripts from our earlier years, from our training, our conditioning. These scripts come from people, not principles, and they rise out of our deep vulnerabilities, our deep dependency on others, and our needs for acceptance and love, for belonging, for a sense of of importance and worth for a feeling that we matter. Whether we are aware of it or not, whether we are in control of it or not, there is a first creation to every part of our lives. We are either the second creation of our own proactive design or we are the second creation of other people's agendas 
of circumstances or of past habits. Habits. The unique human capacities of self awareness, imagination, and conscience enable us to examine first creations and make it possible for us to take charge of our own first creation, to write our own script. Put another way, habit one be proactive says you are the creator have it to begin with the end in mind is the first creation have it to begin with the end of in mind is the first creation moving on all things are created twice it's a quote by Dr. Stephen R. Covey from his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. The quote means that everything has a mental or first creation and a physical or second creation. The physical creation is based on the mental, similar to how a building follows a blueprint. For example, when building, now I know I keep repeating this over and over, but I'm just kind of uh, doing a little review here, catching us up to speed with uh, trying to just kind of catch us up to speed with, to get us caught up with uh, all of the uh, tweets, x slash x posts, and uh, stuff on my blog, uh, which the links of both, uh, like I said, will be in, in the descriptions if you want to check that out and read it at your leisure. Okay, so here we go. All things are created twice. Okay. Uh, right, take this from the top. All right, uh, okay, a quote. It's a quote by Stephen R. Covey from his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. The quote means that everything has a mental or first creation and a physical or second creation. And I know I keep repeating this over and over, but it's very, very important. So it is something that it is kind of important to drive home and memorize. I thought so. Salespeople. Oh well. Uh, all right, so the physical creation is based on the mental, similar to how a building follows a blueprint. For example, when building a home, you create it in every detail before you hammer the first nail into place. Give it a rest, bro. The second of the seven habits that Covey addresses in the book is begin with the end in mind. This means, which is what we addressed earlier, this means that you should plan and visualize what you were going to do and what you're setting out to accomplish and then go out and create it. For example, developing a set of ideas for your new business with every intricate detail of what makes you special or different can save heart heartache and problems later. All right, moving on. Moving on. Begin with the end in mind. Again, this is very important. Is a habit that means to start with a clear understanding of your destination and then take steps in the right direction. 
So, uh, hmm. all right, well, it's based on the principle, begin with the end of mind, it's based on the principle that all things are created twice, first mentally and then physically. This habit is the second of seven habits of highly effective people as defined by Dr. Stephen R. Covey in his best-selling book. To practice this habit, you can visionize or visualize, which is basically, okay, you visualize your life, career, or a specific project the way that you want it to end up being before you actually begin pursuing it. Okay, another way to practice the habit of begin with the end in mind is ha habit number two. Plan ahead. Set goals and do things that have meaning. Okay, I guess it looks maybe maybe it's dry. Maybe it's not. Too I, I'm gonna try and go out here. I can't tell if it's raining still or not. So to practice this habit, you can visionize, right? Visualize. Okay, it's kind of hard to read out here though. Visualize your career or a specific project the way that you want it to end up being before you actually begin pursuing it. Plan ahead. Set goals and do things that have meaning and make a difference. Identify gaps. Complete the current profile of where... Okay, I had better... I had better start making my way back inside. I mean, it just... I'm just seeing tiny drops. It's not raining per se. Very light mist, but... I do not have waterproof equipment, ele electronics out here, so I don't want to damage anything. Okay, so, all right, identify gaps. Complete a current profile of where you are now and identify the gaps uh, between this and the aspira uh, aspirational profile you want to be. Here are some examples of this habit, beginning with the end in mind. Work toward the goal. Parent in parenting, work toward the goal of raising independent, responsible, and caring children. Another example of beginning with the end in mind is vacation planning. Consider what you want to get out of the trip, such as relaxing on the beach, experiencing new cultures, or visiting historical landmarks. Some tools that can help you practice this habit include personal mission, a uh, personal mission statement, which is what we started off the big show with group mission statements uh, yeah so and which will I think we're going to be discussing that in the future uh, visualization and affirmations um, okay and if you want to get religious about that we can talk about prayer as well um, just a form of I guess visualization, affirmation. Um, all right, so moving on. Moving on. Hello.
trying to. Come on. Here we go. Alright. So. Okay. Alright, now. I'm going to talk about principles of personal leadership. What lies behind us and what lies before us. Our tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Okay, I want to read. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a quote by Oliver Wendell Holmes. Principles of personal leadership. This is also a good quote to uh, describe, um, to illustrate. This principle of beginning with the end of in mind, this habit. What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Oliver Wendell Holmes. Habit to begin with the end in mind. Alright. Moving on. Habit two, begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind is the second of seven habits defined by Stephen R. Covey in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Again, I know I'm being repetitive, but it's all part of my teaching strategy, ladies and gentlemen. Just drive, drive these important points home. So, begin with the end in mind. Habit two, this habit is based on the idea, once again, that all things are created twice, once in the mind and once in the physical world. The habit encourages people to begin each day, task, or project with a clear vision of their desired direction and destination and to define clear measures of success and a plan to achieve them. So yeah, once again, if you're a religious person, you know, start off the day with prayers. That's a good way to do that, or you know, doing re reading some scripture or um, or meditating, reading some spiritual religious literature, whether you're Buddhist, Hindu, what have you, or you know, there are plenty of secular practices as well. I mean, there's secular forms of just breathing control, uh, breath breath work they call it, and just kind of mellowing yourself out just so you don't start off the day like a stressed out maniac and just uh, say some positive affirmations. Uh, if you're not quite sure how to do that, well I mean you can uh, Google that, but uh, I will be discussing more about that later on. Um, and an upcoming more about there'll be more about that and upcoming posts. So, but uh, so anyway, you you get the idea though. It's uh, important to begin the day with a clear idea of like what do you what do you want to do that day? What do you want to get done that day? Not only that, do not start off the day worrying about stuff that happened in the past or or stuff that is going to happen in the future. Uh, I mean, granted, you want to plan for the future, but my point being, it's just to focus on the things that need to be done today. Um, as the drunks in AA put it, just for today, or, you know, uh, one day at a time. So, it really helps uh, reduce stress. So, anyways, that being said, so... This habit is uh, based on the idea all things created twice, once in, in the mind, once in the physical world. The habit encourages people to begin each day, task, or project with a clear vision of their desired direction and destination and to define clear measures of success and a plan to achieve them. Here are some examples of how 
to apply this habit. Again, home construction. Perfect. Uh, create a blueprint that shows where every beam and doorway will be placed. Business. Create a thorough business plan that outlines the product or service. Target market. <clears throat> Financial structure and number of employees. By the way, if you want to look at samples of a good business plan, I mean, you can find a lot of them on my blog. Uh, but, you know, uh, you can also, which is charleslanson.blogspot.com, just go there and in the search field type in uh, business plans. Uh, but also, yeah, sba.gov uh, is a good place to go find uh, sample business plans. But business plans are a perfect example of this uh, habit to beginning with the end in mind. Okay, uh, reading a recipe before cooking. Looking at a map before leaving on a trip. Jigsaw puzzles. Before doing a puzzle, look at the cover of the box. Some examples of questions that can help determine objectives and the reasons behind wanting to achieve them include what is the purpose of what I'm trying to achieve? What outcomes do I want? Why are these outcomes important slash valuable? Why am I about to do what I'm about to do? Regular affirmations can also help remind people of their personal mission statement, values, and goals. A good affirmation has the five basic ingredients. It's personal, it's positive, it's present tense, it's visual, and it's emotion. Moving on. All right, so application suggestions. I guess this is for the first habit of just being proactive. These are just little suggestions. But now we're, we're taking our review back to the first habit. Uh, so, here's one suggestion. Because a lot of times, I know for me, I mean, even me, uh, when I first started delving into this, uh, Stephen Covey's work, this is back in 2016, I'm really, you know, I've, I've heard the term proactive. I, I had a sort of a vague general idea of what it meant, but not really. I was like, what is what does it even mean to be proactive? Um, so, if you're like that, then yeah, I'm gonna, my, I hope, hopefully plan to clarify that a little bit for you right now. Um, and in the next couple posts. So, here we go. Here are some suggestions. Application for suggestions for being proactive. For a full day, listen to your language and to the language of the people around you. As you can see, I'm going back outside now. Yeah, it looks like the, the rain is clearing up a little bit. Well, that's good. All right, for a full day, listen to your language and to the language of the people around you. How often you use and hear reactive phrases such as, and once again, reactive is, uh, well, reactive is the antithesis of being proactive. So, uh, okay, okay, well, we'll, we'll get more into that, uh, probably, if not in this 
video than in the next one, but uh, I want to keep rolling through here. Uh, so number one, once again, we'll take it from the top. For a full day, listen to your language, and to the language of the people around you. How often do you use and hear reactive phrases such as, if only, I can't, or I have to. Uh, you know, whereas a proactive person would be more like, instead of saying, if only I could do this or do that, they would be like saying, I can do that, by golly. I'm going to go out and make this happen. Or, yeah, I can't. A reactive person says, I can't. Whereas a proactive person would be like, I can do this. Maybe not today or tomorrow, but if I train hard enough, research enough, get prepared enough, perhaps in 30 days I will be able to do this thing. Okay, so, or another reactive phrase is, I have to. I have to do this, or I have to do that. Whereas a proactive person realizes we don't have to do anything. Everything is a choice. Our, most things are a choice. Most things that we, that reactive people consider things that they have to do are deep down inside just choices. But I'll get more into that as well. Um, moving on. Okay, uh, another applicant application suggestion for being proactive in your daily life I identify an experience you might encounter in the near future where based on past experience you would probably behave reactively uh, review the situation again reactive is more, more like well I'll be talking more about reactive versus proactive behavior. Probably, uh, yeah, if not by, like I said, if not by the end of this video, then in the next one. Um, and once again, this is all, if you really want to go and get caught up on all of this or read more about all of this, it's on my blog, charleslanson.blogspot.com. And uh, my Twitter feed. Just go to at uh, Charles Lanson at X. So, second application suggestion for being proactive: identify an experience you might encounter in the near future, where, where based on past experience you would probably behave reactively review the situation in the context of your circle of influence once again circle of influence being things you have direct control over how could you respond proactively take several moments and create the experience vividly in your mind picturing yourself responding in a proactive manner Remind yourself of the gap between stimulus and response. Make a commitment to yourself to exercise your freedom to choose. Okay, once again, so this, uh, remind yourself of your gap between stimulus and response. This is, um, what he's talking about there is, uh, be behavioral scientists and just uh, philosophers and uh, uh, th there's this notion uh, that between when an or between the time that an organ organism receives a stimulus and between the time that they receive the stimulus and then they respond and like to the st stimulus 
there is what's called reaction time. RT. There's a gap. And that being uh, a gap in time. And that being said, like a lot of people don't really realize that. Part of being proactive is realizing that you do not have to respond immediately to stimuli. You can just step back for a minute, take a few deep breaths, think about how you're go going to respond, and then respond. That's what this gap is he's referring to. So remind yourself of this gap between stimulus and response. Make a commitment to yourself to exercise your freedom to choose. Select a problem. Oh. Here's another application suggestion on how to be proactive in your day-to-day -day life. Select a problem from your work or personal life that is frustrating to you. Determine whether it is a direct, indirect, or no control problem. So yeah, well, direct control are things that we have. I mean, this is all pretty straightforward. I mean, but yeah, direct. Uh, yeah, direct is something that we you know we all sort of things that we have sort of direct control over um, well I'll be, I'll be getting more into that in, in the next uh, video but once again or you can just check out my blog uh, charleslanson.blogspot.com or my at charleslanson on twitter slash x uh, but once again so uh, select a problem from your work personal life that is frustrating to you. Determine whether it is a direct, indirect, or no control problem. So some things we do have control over, but we don't have direct control over them. Um, we can just sort of influence them. That's called indirect and then there's things that we have absolutely no control over. So identify the first step you can take in your circle of influence which is things we have direct control over to solve it and then take that step. Okay so the fourth su application suggestion for how you can be proactive is Try the 30-day test of proactivity. Be aware of the change in your circle of influence. That's right, just try all this stuff that I'm talking about for 30 days. And be aware of the change of your circ things that you, circle of influence, things that you have direct control over. You'll find that if you're working within that circle, exclusively trying to be proactive, working on the things you actually have control over, your circle of influence will actually expand and you'll start having control over things that you didn't have control over and you'll start being having influence over things you previously had no influence over before you started doing the 30-day proactive test. Mark my words, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so, all right, ladies and gents, this is uh, the end of the big shoe. So it's time for us to part ways. Until our paths cross again. Happy trails, everybody.